Hi boys and girls and all the library patrons who are fond of kids sewing crafts. This is Miss Jen with the Pflugerville Quilt Guild and I'm here with another tutorial for one of our December crafts and it's a game you can make for yourself. This is a tic-tac-toe game. What you're seeing is a little pocket that has a nine patch because of course I'm a quilter and a nine patch is a basic quilting patch. We quilter ladies have made these nine patches for you and to us they look like a tic-tac-toe board and can you see that? Can you see how the way these little squares have been sewn together they look like a tic-tac-toe board? Well, that is what we're going to be working with today. And with your kit, you are going to get the pieces for the pocket. And they're, excuse me, they're pinned together. The first part you're going to make is going to be the lining for the nine patch, which has your tic-tac-toe lines on it. And all you need to do is sew across the top. Now, your instructions, are written out in plain writing for someone to read to you and then on the back there's my handwriting with a diagram of me trying to show show you what you do step one step two step three this is the finished tic-tac-toe pocket inside it you are going to put your X's and O's which I have made some paper cutout ones so you can start playing immediately. Or, if you like, at home you can find your own playing bits. I have white and red pom-poms you can play with and they'll store in the pocket. I have buttons. You need five. Whatever you're going to use as your mark markers, you need five of them. Well, now I've got my pocket full. <laughs> there. Uh, as long as they're different. I've got heart buttons and oval buttons. Oval buttons and heart buttons to play tic-tac-toe. Oh look! Ha ha! Oval wins! And when you get done playing, the pocket will store your pieces. Whether you're using pom-poms or paper cutouts, your little pocket will store them for you. So a nice way of having a game together. This makes a good gift to give to someone. All right, now let's get started with what comes in your kit. You'll have your instructions with just the written explanation, the little diagram, but the very first thing you're going to see is that your tic-tac-toe patches are pinned with the pretty sides together and I have to tell you they are all different colors red ones blue ones gray ones black ones black and white ones and you, your seam lines have been marked if you remember you want to pull a, a double strand of thread and you're going to uh, choose a neutral neutral thread. I have a neutral thread and oddly enough it happens to be gray. It's going to match. Make sure you tie a knot at the end of your uh, string. It shouldn't be any longer than this part of your arm or it, it just gets too uh, too confusing and too tangly. Right here on the marked lines you want to go in and out and the tinier the stitches, probably the better. You want to watch both sides to make sure that your lines are straight. And you're doing this at home. You're not in a class that's going to need the room in a minute. So take your time on this. It, it's up to you. You can go fast, you can go slow. If you don't like the way it looks, it's okay to uh, pull it out and start over. It, I mean, if you wind up with too many knots or too many loops, there's nothing wrong with starting over till you get it just right. 
Now, if you happen to have a sewing machine, that will work too. You just line that little marked sewing line on the sewing machine and sew nice and straight on that. There you go. Now, see, you can see how nice, I'm trying, nice and straight that is. Okay, I'm gonna be back in just a minute with the finished product. All right, there you have it. My line is completely stitched, looks nice and straight. I started with a knot on the end of my thread. I knotted the thread when I got to the end. Now, this is a facing, and what a facing does is it covers all the stitching lines from previous sewing. And this is what we're going to do. This has been pinned for, pinned for you. I have to make sure I'm in the field where you can actually see what I'm doing. I folded the facing back. Now, if you have a safety pin and you want this to stay in place, I happen to have a straight pin, you can pin it after you have folded it. But I want you to remember that this is now the pretty side or the right side of your pocket. This, even though it's pretty, is the inside. So when you put your second part that's going to actually make the pocket, you need to put the pretty side of it toward the pretty side of the patches and you're going to line it up now right here is see the little fold and there's a little fold let that remind you the folds go together and you're going to line it up make make sure your corners match your corners match well at least the best they can doesn't have to be absolutely perfect okay and you have safety pins. I'm gonna use a straight pin. I'm gonna use several straight pins. I'm hope, I hope you're seeing this. It's hard for me to know because I'm busy sewing and not looking in a camera. There you go. And now if I had my sewing machine, I would put this part of my pocket under the sewing machine and I would sew straight down to where those two lines come together. See, I'm, I've got to remember to show it to you. I'm going to come down, come down here to where the two lines come together and I'm going to pivot, turn, and then I'll sew straight to where the two lines pivot and then I'll turn and I'll sew straight to here. Now, people sewing by hand will start sewing, and this is what I'm going to encourage you to do. I have, I talk about neutral thread, and I have a black thread here that I think will show up better. Yeah, here we go, see? Now, I may have made this a little extra long so that I don't have to re-thread, but I'm gonna come up through here, and even though I have a knot on the end of my thread. I am going to catch right here. I'm gonna catch, I'm gonna make a little loop. Just catch a little, little bit of, of the fabric and I'm gonna make a loop and I'm going to pull a knot there. There, because I'm going to make sure it, it's knotted two ways. Okay, there you go. And I'm going to sew, and when I get to this corner, I'm going to do another knot, and I'm going to sew, and when I get this corner, I'm going to do my loop and pull my knot. There, here's the finished product. If I don't know if you can see, but I had a nice long black thread and I was able to make the corner. When I came here, I tied and I happened to have a needle with a white thread and this isn't going to show, so I just finished with my white thread here. But all three of my sides are sewn. You can tell I caught it well. And what I'm going to do is turn this uh, right side out. Now, I'm gonna just trim the little 
dinky corners off, but I'm not cutting my thread. I hope you can see that. I'm gonna trim these little corner dog ears just to make it easier for the pocket to turn right side out. There we go. I'm gonna stick my finger in the corner of this one, hold it down, and poke my finger up. There. Sometimes it might help to have a pencil or a toothpick to help you get your corners poked out the right way. That's pretty good though, I think. There. Now here is my finished tic-tac-toe. And all it was, was sewing the facing. Remember, we called this part the facing because this fabric co covers up all those little stitching seams that might catch on things. And it won't fray, it, loose threads won't come out. And then we put this one, pretty sides together. See what happened when we turned it right side out? The Pretty sides were on the inside. Now the pretty sides are showing. There you go. And we have our tic tac toe pocket. And we can put, uh, I included little funny paper X's and O's for you to uh, use. Everybody has a little baggie of those until you decide what you're going to use for your own. So uh, they come in multiple colors. Uh, the ladies at the Pflugerville Quilt Guild have made your nine patch for you. And in between games, you store your parts in your pocket. Whether you choose to use paper X's and O's, maybe funny buttons. Uh, this is a great way to use leftover buttons. This one would be, and you will, you will need five of each of your markers. You don't need nine, even though there's nine spaces, because taking turns with someone, they have a chance to play and you have a chance to play, and you stop when someone has three in a row, so. All right, so we are finished with our little tic-tac-toe pocket. And there's our, we're ready to go.